do this one. I don't really want to do that. That's kind of easy. Uh, they're not fun to drive, really, because they're just circles. But like, um, I mean, I like Tiger Temple. But... Right. Let's do engine. gonna change the car again because <laughs> uh, I had like I feel the need to showcase my tiny collection of cars um, sure spiderweb patch do the ring this piece it doesn't really matter like uh, but like uh, let's see team cortex Wooden. There's a best of blue. Blue and white stars. Uh, white. Kind of boring color. Team quarter red. Phantom red. A phantom red. Let's have a stick. We're going to have a number this time. Let's have six. Oh, there's a devil. A double. So let's think of other things I can talk about. Uni was a weird time for me, though. We used to go down to this Hobbit-themed pub that was literally called The Hobbit. It was also Lord of the Rings, that whole Tolkien book. And all of the drinks were cocktails that were named after characters. And there were shot cocktails for sub-characters, pint cocktails for main characters. And we'd all have this thing called a Gimli a lot of the time. But, like, a lot of these pint cocktails were mostly energy drinks, and I used to literally get chest pains from drinking them all the time. <laughs> you know? <clears throat> it got to the point where I was, like, in genuine pain a lot of the time, and I felt like I was going to die. Like, I was having, like, severe chest pain, and I was just sitting there, collapsed on, the, on my, like... But, like, it was, it was a good time. Uh, it was like quite a good laugh. We used to go there a lot, like I said. We got very drunk there a lot of the time. There was a lot of metal at the place. It was pretty good. Because there was only other, one other metal bar in our area, and after we left, it closed down. It's called the dungeon. Um, that was good fun. I used to headbang a lot there. It's really hard when you're outside of a festival for metalheads to find a place to hang out. Unless you live in, say, like, Bristol. I went to uni in Southampton, so, like, um... But if you live in Bristol, there's a bunch of fairly decent metal clubs. Uh, metal pubs. Uh, the one I like to hang out with at was the, uh, Cauldron. Uh, really fucking good. Um, <clears throat> but, like, uh, they have really good whiskey and craft ales and stuff. And, like, they, they manual all the time, so, yeah, of course I like it. Um... But, like, it's kind of hard to find a hangout because, um, in some places, there's just, especially out here, there aren't, like, they, they, try and, they try to pretend that, like, my genre is not a thing <laughs> because out here it's not a thing. And I found one punk bar in China, but it's not exactly down with the system because they're not allowed to say that in China. So, um, it was alright, though. That was like, actually a really nicely run place. A lot of hardcore punk, a lot of pro mags and iron regan and stuff. Um, not my personal choices because I'm much more like death and thrash metal, but I was still enjoying anything at that point. Festivals are really the place you go to if you're like a metal fan to like hang out with your with guys that are like more your community, and you'd be amazed at like the demographics. Like loads of people are oh yeah, no one listens to metal. Well, actually, I'll have you know, I went to a Carcass concert, or like, I was up in the tent watching Carcass of Grazpop, and watching Immolation and Crowbar, and there were a lot of hot girls there, 
and like I was just seeing loads of hot girls just walking around on their own. Um, it was actually kind of weird, and like one of my uh, it was a friend of a friend, but I guess he's my friend now because we we got drunk together and he's cool, so it's fine. <laughs> Although he probably thinks I'm an asshole. Uh, I I don't know. He was talking to me. He's a gamer. He's quite like. A nice guy, but he uh, was always talking to me about like wanting to get a girlfriend. He said, "You live in China, right? I like Asian girls." And I was having like, "Oh yeah, well, if you want an Asian girlfriend, going to live in Asia probably is a good choice." But nowadays, I'm not really sure if that's actually true because you feel like an outsider the whole time you're here, um, and you, you don't, you know, you don't feel like, especially if you're like sitting there thinking, "You know what? I'm on my way out." You know what I mean? I'm, don't really want to stay here, you're not really looking for a love life then, because that's going to keep you in a place where you are planning on leaving. And, um, yeah, but anyway, that's not, it's not about me. And, like, we just see, like, these Chinese girls and, like, uh, Vietnamese-looking girls just walking around on their own in Doc Martens and an Iron Maiden shirt. I'd be like, what about her? She's pretty cute. And he'd be like, oh, I can't talk to her. She'll be in intimidated by us. And he's like, dude, look at us. We're like the, one of the least intimidating guys here. I was like, I'll just go over to her and say hi and ask her where she's from and say, oh, yeah, I work abroad, you know, kind of thing. It's probably a bad way to start off with somebody. Hey, you look kind of Asian. I work in Asia. This is, wow. <laughs> like, and also because it's like Belgium, she's probably like, what? <laughs> like, you know, because she probably speaks other languages, like, what? She speak in Belgium, which is like multi linguistic kind of area. Um, <laughs> so, you, you know, they were like, oh, you're going to be bothering her. It's like, dude, you've got to talk to people if you want to get to know people, right? And you, you talk to dudes and you're fine. She's on her own, she's probably lonely. And they were like, nah, I don't talk to them. I was like, okay, fine. But like, it's like, um, it's just such a big communal thing, the, the metal community is awesome, <clears throat> you really feel like you're part of something, and like I always feel way more comfortable having been at a metal festival at least once a year, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to get to go to one this year, which kind of sucks, because I'm even a playing grass pop this year, and download doesn't look too shabby, but like, I don't like the way download stuff and it's very cash grabby nowadays and it's uh, expensive because Britain and they're always trying to push their dumbass Korean bands on people <clears throat> um, so yeah like uh, I was just kind of like oh I could go there or I could do that and it's like oh yeah these bands are playing this year and like obituary are playing and I was just like oh man I gotta go see obituary and everyone else like What's really great is no one really judges what none of my friends do. I used to have, like, in college, loads of friends who are, like, new metal elitists, if that could ever be considered a thing. Well, not, and they were dumbasses. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, one of my friends, I was like, oh, you like new metal, right? You're like System of a Down. And he was like, no, I won't. And it wasn't until Kerrang literally said, System of a Down and new metal. He was like, oh, yeah, like, I like this new band. It's called System of a Down. I was like, Wow, you were just like the worst person. I would be talking about death tones for years, and then like they'd say at uni, oh yeah, I found this new band out recently, they're called Death Tones, and they're like, are you fucking. No one listens to a word that I'm saying. And it got to a point where I got really annoyed with them because they would just piss on any band they didn't like. They'd be like, oh, fucking hate Metallica. I was like, yes, you hate Metallica. I'm sure they're really bothered by that, <laughs> you know. Um, <laughs> Because you like Papa Roach and Good Charlotte, you know what I mean? It's like, if, you know, like I ended up moving around and hanging out with different people, and like, uh, it's nice to have friends who are a little less judgmental because it gets you in a toxic kind of mentality. These are the people who are always like, man, I don't listen to that hardcore screamo shit like Lamb of God and Trivium, and I was just like, God, you guys are like metal boomers, <laughs> like. Oh, they're screaming, it hurts my ears. <laughs> like, bring me the classics, okay? What are you, like, 50? <laughs> so, yeah, like, um, 
I ended up hanging out with these guys, and I'd just be like, oh, yeah, man, like, they liked Bad Wolves and Disturbed and In Flames, and I like those bands, because I just like all metal, uh, unless it's a really just a band I just don't like for personal reasons, or I just don't get on with them. Genre doesn't bother me. So I would be going to see In Flames, and then there would be a bit of a lull in the main stages where my friends were like, oh, I don't really want to go see these bands, whatever, like maybe Architects or something. And um, I'd be like, uh, oh, okay, cool. I'm going to go see Immolation now. You can come along if you want. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I don't know anything about them. And <laughs> two songs in, they'd be like, oh, where can they go? <laughs> you know? Because it's like, yeah, I didn't think this was up to I could tell by the way you guys. I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm loving Crowbar. And they're like, I don't understand a word this guy is saying. And I'm like, no, oh, they're good, man. He's like, yeah, like, you know, I know you like them and everything, but they're not for me. And it's like, that's the way you talk about it, you know? They're not for me. Not, oh, shit, I don't like them. Oh, Karang said that they're not cool. You listen to Paramore? Oh, that's a chick band. Okay. <laughs> like, you know? So, like, dude, I listen to stuff that I like. Whatever. You get a lot of shit nowadays. A lot of people shit posting and getting angry about bands. And it's like, you've got metal elitists around me going, yeah, fucking ghost and five finger death punch suck. And I'm like, as a guy who listens to like the heaviest Norwegian death and black metal, I also listen to ghost and five finger death punch. <laughs> like, you know? And they're like, oh my god, yeah. And I'm just like, sat there with my patch jacket, which literally has a carcass right next to a Judas Priest, right next to a ghost patch. And, like, they're like, oh, yeah, like, they're not true. And you're like, uh, okay, sure. <laughs> like, you know, and, like, I just listen to, like, what stuff that I like, you know. But, yeah, it always got me that people would always get super pissed. Like, my friend went off and watched Kiss while I was watching Carcass. Obviously, Carcass finished faster than Kiss, so I went back and watched the rest of Kiss. And I was, like, enjoying both of them. Because, you know, <laughs> like, but then again, we were, we were at, like, I was legit enjoying the Godsmack, to be honest. <laughs> like, you know, I think people give these peep bands too much shit just because of internet memeage clout. And it's like, dude, like, yeah, I know, it's like edgy post grunge shit. But, like, my friends are, like, really like them. And then I was, like, kind of ironically being like, yeah. I stand alone, and then like they were like, "Are you taking the piss?" And I was like, "Nah, legit, I'm actually trying to get into it, especially crying like a bitch." <laughs> he literally says it like that, and from now on, that's how I say bitch. I say bitch, and everyone's like, "Oh, it's like a god smack reference." So yeah, they do. They they've affected my life now. And, you know, I listen to Disturbed. I listen to Lamb of God. I listen to Slayer. I listen to Slipknot, and those are all very different bands. Um, yeah, I think, like, you know, I understand why people have a favorite genre and stuff, but I'm just like, I need variety a lot of the time, so I'm gonna go find other stuff. And, like, my friends, like, Rob and that, they are like, they, they come with me to festivals, and they're like, maybe this time I'll get into the heavier stuff like you do, and I'll discover some heavier bands and gradually move into death metal, because they're kind of open-minded towards it, and then they come down and we, they watch, like, Immolation with me, or, like, uh, something like that, and they're like, uh, maybe not today, <laughs> you know, maybe today's not that day, and it's like, you know, I'm always saying to them, look, dude, it's the deep end, you don't start at the deep end. I didn't start at the deep end. For the first, you remember, like I said in a previous episode, I was starting with Def Leppard, and we were at the Def Leppard concert, and my friend was like, this, I wouldn't be watching this if it weren't for you being here and us waiting for, like, um, Sabaton to come on. That was it Sabaton? Someone else. I can't remember. He said, I, I just don't like this band. And I was like... This is, like, one of the first bands I ever listened to, and it is very, like, dad rock. And, like, um, you know, I like it, but he's just, like, he likes Kiss, but he was just, like, I can't get behind this. And, um, yeah, you know, like, it's just, like, it takes all sorts, and you've got to just be chill about it. And, like, he was having fun, I was having fun. 
And it's like, yeah, like I was saying, you don't start off direct into, I'm going to listen to nothing but mayhem. <laughs> like, you know, like, I only listen to suffocation. <laughs> you know, like, you start off like, oh yeah, this is cool. You know, like, stuff that people kind of, like, have and can introduce you to. And then you're like, oh yeah, this is kind of cool. And then you get deeper and deeper and deeper, and then you go into more and more obscure stuff. And, like, a lot of my friends are always asking me, what were the gateway bands for you? Like, what made you go from, like, being able to put up the stream vocals, as they say? And it's like, well, it's more about learning what they're saying and getting used to the idea that it's, like, an acceptable way to sing. Um, and, like, it's, like, half-and-half half bands that do clean and screen vocals, like Kill Switch and Trivium, really help. Eamon and Mark are one of the first bands, and Insomnium were two of the first bands, really, that I was listening to that were, like, heavy screamed all of the time. But also Paradise Lost of all bands were kind of like an opener in this. And it's because, well, when I saw Paradise Lost, opening for them were Insomnium and Bride. <laughs> like, you know, so, like, um, real mix there, <clears throat> you're talking, like, gothic doom metal, <clears throat> and being the headliner, but, like, right, a pretty, like, out there, you know, um, I think they're Norwegian, or they're Swedish, um, Finnish, they wore the paint, and they had a song called Rape by Night, and I was like, <laughs> Sorry, this song is called Rape by Night, that is amazing. And I still listen to that song to this day. He has great vocals on it. Um, yeah, like, it's just, you know, you, you go through it. And then one day, when I was in New Zealand, I just saw the album artwork for Carcass's Surgical Steel. And I'd seen it everywhere, because that album was promoted like fucking crazy if you're in the metal community. And I was just like, I don't pick up this album, I don't even know what it's like. But they look cool. And I was just like, yeah, no, I dig this. And like, it took me a while, and then I picked that up, and then I picked up a load of Arch Enemy, like classic Arch Enemy. Uh, like, uh, you know, the, the ones, like, the one that was about the Chaos Legions, and uh, the one that, uh, I forget the names of it, uh, the one that had uh, Nemesis and all of those classic ones on. And I was just like, yeah, yeah, I'm really getting into this. And then it was, um, what did I, uh, other gateway bands. I think it's also the mentality. You've got to be the kind of guy who picks up, like, band names and stuff from festivals and, like, from, like, magazines and, like, the internet and, like, stuff and be part of the community and go, oh, I found out a sick new band. They're called, like, I don't know, uh, War and Noir. And, like, um, you know, I just picked them up from, like, you know, one of my mates is going to this festival, I can't go, I'm going to go check out this band. And like, you do a lot of research and sometimes you're going to get burned. For example, um, I tried really hard to like Dying Fetus, I'm not a big fan of Dying Fetus, no offense to the guys, but I understand why other people like them. And uh, Cerebral Ball, I went on like, I was going to watch them, but I was too hungover. This was a Hammerfest which is a small festival that they sometimes hold in Wales. Um, but all of my friends were just like, hung over and like, nah, nah, I can't be bothered. And I was like, well, I might go and watch Cerebral Ball. And I got there and I was just pounding my brain and I was like, oh, I can't deal with it right now, <laughs> you know? And then I was just like, later went and listened to their stuff and I was like, ah, it's not really my kind of thing anyway. Uh, just no offense to the guys. Definitely check them out if you're into like that kind of like heavy, grindy kind of stuff. But like, um, it's just the lead singer's voice didn't really do it for me. But then I listened to Anon Nafrak, so that was another gateway band for me. They were one of the heaviest bands and one of the heaviest bands to date that I listened to. And I literally just picked them up at random <clears throat> because they were suggested to me on my YouTube feed because I was listening to a load of Carcass and then Hiss from the Moat appeared. And then Behemoth appeared, and then, like, for some reason, Anal Nafrak appeared, and I was like, okay, I'm checking these guys out, because their song titles are fucking ludicrous. And then that was around the time I started to listen to, I just, Cannibal Corpse, man. I just picked up a, a skeletal domain. I didn't even know. 
I just picked it up out of HMV and was just like, let's pick up this, uh, based off the artwork. And I was just like, oh my god, <laughs> like, you know, what the hell? <clears throat> I, I, I discovered a lot of bands just walking into HMV and just throwing about 70 pounds of random discs. Porcupine Tree that way, Fighting the Death Punch, Mastodon, Blind Guardian. So, a big wide range, Orange Goblin. Loads of stuff. <clears throat> it's a good way to find stuff, but you gotta have the money. Nowadays you can just YouTube stuff there, or like Spotify, so it's much easier for people. 